What's up guys? Welcome to another Journey Through 30. I know I've been missing in action for one month. Don't kill me. So let's get straight into it. So updates. Medically, I am officially off Eligar slash Lupron. That's the monthly injection that I had to take every month, every freaking month. But I'm officially off of it. Now, I'm supposed to continue taking the tamoxifen daily, which is the hormonal drug that's supposed to suppress my estrogen. But I'm supposed to continue taking that. I stopped taking that maybe two weeks after I stopped the Eligard. And the reason why I stopped it is because I was looking at the harmful side effects that it has when you continue on tamoxifen for a long period of time so i wanted to like reset my body into like getting back into the groove of things so i'm going to still take the tamoxifen but i think i'm going to make it instead of a daily thing i think i'm going to make it like a weekly thing so with that being said i'm still trying to wean myself off of the medication now i have been going to my follow-ups i have been seeing my doctors i have been told that i need to um lose weight of course and i also have to start exercising so this goes on to tell you guys that i am highly seriously considering bariatric surgery I am thinking about getting the gastric sleeve and I am thinking about starting the process on doing that because as you guys all know from my accident, it is not easy for me to get around. I'm not saying I can't get around. It's very hard for me to use my legs, well not my leg, my one leg. And you need that in order to exercise. So, in order for me to exercise, I would have to do low-impact exercising like swimming, Pilates, yoga, that kind of thing. And what I really want to do is I want to do weight training. I want to do um, calisthenics. Like, I want to train that kind of way, but I know that's going to be a lot on my body. Not saying that I can't do it, but I'm trying to challenge myself to do it. Which brings me to this. I would love to see those exercise classes that you see on Instagram where the girlies are dancing. Because I used to love dancing. Like, I used to be a little dance hall queen back in the day. But it's like a lot of those classes are really not offered here in New York. Like, they're more so out of state. But I'm going to keep digging until I find someone that's offering those kind of classes in New York specifically Brooklyn another form of exercise that I have been begging some of my friends is to go skating like you know on the quads I have like two sets of skates four quads right so I would love to go skating like that's a form of exercise but the only thing with that is I'm highly afraid of falling but I know falling is a part of learning. I have been fiending to learn how to skate backwards. And that's like the ultimate goal for me when I go back skating. Like just to learn how to skate backwards. I'm going to find me a skating class because one of my homeboys used to be a skating instructor. And he swears up and down that he doesn't want to teach me how to skate. So I'm going to have to find somebody that knows how to skate. Not saying that I don't know how to skate. Now I know how to skate. I know how to skate on quads. I know how to skate on inlines. I know how to go forward but to do tricks and stuff like that like what i see like the old school skating and stuff like that like that's the things that i want to learn like my mom is like the best skater on quads ever but like me she hasn't done it in a while so it's like something that you have to get in the groove of things like it's like muscle memory but i'm definitely gonna get into it now next on the list i am i have a few trips that i am planning next year like i'm not playing with this staying home or waiting for other people to go on trips and stuff like that like i don't know if you guys remember two journey through 30s ago that i said that 
I wanted to start traveling. I wanted to start doing things. If I say I want to do something, I'm just going to do it. Because I low-key, not even low-key, high-key, I be waiting on other people to do certain things. Like, like if it's something locally and I want to do it, like, I'll do it on my own. But as far as, like, experiencing different things and going different places, I really be waiting for people. Like, I, I be like, let's go do this. Or let's plan to do this. And then plans will be made, but it's never ex- executed. So... All of that is changing. So, be prepared for a whole bunch of travel vlogs for 2024. Now to my baby, Exquisite Glam. I have been neglecting the fuck out of my business. I haven't been doing no beauty vlogs, no makeup shorts, no how-tos, reviews for about a good three weeks. Partially because I was sick within those three weeks. And partially because I had lack of motivation. Like, I didn't have no ideas. And now we're in the month of October. And I don't have nothing for spooky season. Like, every time I say I'm going to go try to get prosthetics, try to make prosthetics. Because those things take time. And because I'm at work 24 fucking 7, I really don't have time to, like, execute what I want to execute. But that's really on me for not having time management. But I'm going to get back on it. So, now we're going into the meat and potatoes. This is really what I wanted to talk to you guys about. And this is really what I wanted to really try to, like, figure out. Because maybe if it's just me or is everyone going through this, right? So, boom. I come from a very big family on both sides. My mother's side and my father's side is very, very big, right? My mother's side, of course, is the West Indian side. Everybody's either Panamanian, Jamaican, Bayesian. Those those three are the major ones, right? And then we're all scattered all over the place. You have some in New York. You have some people in Florida. You have some people in Cali. You have some people in Canada. You have some people in Panama. You have some people in England. Like, my mom's side of the family is like, we're very, very big, but we're like all over the place. So it's like hard to keep tabs on people. My father's side of the family, they're Native American, so... They're all down south. Like, if I really wanted to check up on them, I can. But that's another story to get into. We're not even going to get into my father's side, man. We're just going to leave that right there. So what I was trying to say is I am used to my family being close-knit. Like, whether they're in your immediate family, secondary, or outside your nuclear circle family if that makes sense like those are cousins of cousins of cousins type thing right so my grandmother was the type to keep tabs on everybody she knew when people were born she knew when people were getting married graduations anniversaries deaths like my grandmother was very good at keeping tabs on everybody so i tried to ignite that tradition again within the last two years I want to say so I had this conversation with my mother and I was like it's crazy how we buried the people that kept the family close and the family that's here like it's like you see them when you see them you deal with them when you deal with them some of them you might not like some of them you might not fuck with so it's like you deal when you deal if you have to because that's family so everyone knows right I am a ride or die type person when it comes to my nationality, when it comes to my heritage, where it comes to my history, where it comes to where I come from, how I came from, where it all started, everyone's journey, right? Prime example, my mother showed me a photo of my grandfather when he was like maybe... 15 or 16 and I was so emotional about it because I was like oh my god look at my young grandfather like I've never seen that and it's like you don't enjoy the elder stories until they're not here to say it or not here to tell you he's even shared photos of my grandmother when she was a teenager like just to see how they were in their teens and their 20s and 
listening to their journey from coming from the islands or coming from Central America to get to the States and what they had to do when they get up here, how they maintain, how they sent money to keep the family together in the islands and all of that. Like, those things to me is, like, very intriguing. And, like, you want to catch those moments before you can't catch them anymore or you, you're you not around to hear it. Even my mom, like, even though my mother is first generation born in the States, like, listening to how she grew up and listening to how she maneuvered through life, like, those things is, like, very much um, intriguing because it's like, okay, when you hear those things, it's like, all right, I could see why I do this in life or I see where I get this from or I see how where I get this mindset from or you know it's like passed down from generation to generation so I'm second generation born in the states and I just took the initiative to make a family book so in this family book I wanted to document everyone's journey through life especially the ones that are living right so I presented it to my family. I don't know if some of my family members are not interested. I don't know if some of my family members are, like, taking it serious. I don't know what it is. But I really high-key felt the way because I'm like, yo, we're not we're not here. You don't know when your time is going to expire on this planet. You don't know when it's time for you to go to essence. And me of all people know that this is, I'm on my third chance at life. I could almost died from my accident. I could have really died. Then this breast cancer situation, that's my second chance at life. I could have really died from that, but I'm here. Right? So Imagine if I had a daughter or if I had children and I'm telling them my experiences through life. Like, imagine what kind of impact that would have on them. So, I decided that I'm going to still keep the family book thing going. But instead of trying to include everyone, I'm just going to take everybody's individual stories and I'm going to just collectively collect it for myself. And if people want access to it or people want to see it or whatever the case may be, like, I'll let you see it. I'll let you go through it. But I'm just going to keep that as a family heirloom and pass it down to the family. Like, if you want to know where we come from, what we come from, how we came here, how we were dealing, how you just want to, you just have questions about your family lineage I'll pass that down. I guess I will be the gatekeeper and so on and so forth if people want to know, right? But here's the thing. Like I said, we buried the people that kept the family close. We buried the people that genuinely checked up on you. When there was no social media, there was no um, cell phones. Like, people generally got their ass up, got ready, called and said, yo, I'm coming to check you, came over to see if you was okay, checked the family, see if you was all right, and that. And they maintained that every week or every other day or on the phone, that type of thing. Like, we, like, we don't do that. And I'm born in 89. So, I know my generation, because mo- most of my friends don't even keep up with their family like that. If you're not in their nuclear family, like, their immediate family, they're, like, they're not really checking up on, oh, this is my cousin's, this is my great cousin, or this is my second cousin. Like, people are not keeping tabs on that like that. But that's my little family rant. But besides that, now let's get into friends. Now, I'm the type... I used to have a bad habit of every two years, I would have new friends. Like, every, it was, for whatever reason, it was just like a two-year stamp. Like, once the two-year mark hit, I would be, either we don't flex no more. It's, we still cool, but we just don't chill like that, or we just don't, we just lose contact, right? But now that I'm in my 30s, I have maintained... I think my longest friendship 
gotta be let me see i graduated in 07 so my longest friendship is about to be almost 20 years my longest friendship right and i have a few more that's under under 20 years and i have a few more that's a little bit over 10 and i have one or two that's like in the high almost tens like maybe nine years eight years like close to that so i'm just basically just saying that i'm trying to maintain friendships relationships and stuff like that those that that matter those that make me who i am like i'm trying to maintain that like i don't want to lose that momentum like i don't want to be the type of friend where if you're talking to me and i can't tell what's going on with you just by how you sound like i don't want to be that type of person like i'm really on top of it like that like high key like if you sound funny i'm a no how intimate relationships your girl's been single december <laughs> will make three years right i've been single but we are not going to go back into that story if you want to know about how my ex did me go back five journey through 30s ago right but dating dating is in the bar is set in hell basically like the bar is really set beneath hell because i'm noticing that a lot of females are saying that they don't like men, they hate men, men ain't shit, men this, men that. But I really feel it's the type of men that you're going for. If you're going for a specific type of man and you're always going for that type of person, then maybe you need to change who you're dating or who's your preference. Maybe you need to go outside of your comfort zone because maybe you'll find what you're looking for. He might not be in a package that you want him to be in, but he'll be the person that you want to be. And as far as men, like, men complain that there's no good women out here. Now, just like women, if you're complaining that there's no good women out here, maybe you should change the type of women that you're attracted to or the type of women that you're going for. Because if you're going for the same exact type of person, maybe that's a sign telling you that you need to change your preference. Like, I was just speaking to one of my homeboys, and he was telling me that, you know, he likes toxic girls. And I'm like, and what has toxic gotten you? Toxic has gotten you a restraining order. Toxic has gotten you almost locked up. Toxic has gotten you a couple kids with different women. Like, you're not tired of that? And when I said that in that manner, he was like, you know what? You make sense. Yeah, change how you're... <laughs> With the type of female that you're dealing with, I mean, you might you might like toxic, but maybe you could find somebody that's more non-toxic, but could be toxic when it comes to certain things. Like, maybe you need to ease up off of being 100% toxic, and you get you somebody that's like at 5%, maybe. But, you like what you like. I'm not the type of person to judge, but if that's what you like, that's what you like. But, if you keep hitting your head against the same wall which is the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and nothing is changing, then it's not them anymore. Now it's a you thing. Now, let's talk about being low-key. I am trying my best to move low-key. Like, I like the fact that people don't know where, who I'm with, what I'm doing, who I'm doing it with and how I'm doing it. Like, I like that. I like the fact that I'm not broadcasting certain things. Like, you only know what I want you to know. But, I don't like the fact that some people might have certain access to you because either they knew you for a while or they've been around you a few years or they know people that you might know. Y'all might have intertwining friendships. Like, I'm tired of that. But, it's also coming from being a social person. So, me and my best friend was just talking about this as well. Like, when you've been living somewhere for an upteen amount of years, and people know that's where you live, and if you may not deal with them like that, they still have access to you. Or if you had a phone number for 20, 30 years, 
and they still have your phone number locked in their phone like they have access to you or if they know that you hang out at this spot if they want to pop up on you they can like i was just saying that you gotta switch it up like you gotta change things and not change things because you don't want nobody to find you but change things because you don't want people to have access to you if that's the type of person that you are but that's the type of person that i'm trying to be like if you know me you have access to me but it's how you get access to me it's not that oh i know malika be hanging out at such and such on these days so i'm gonna go check her on such and such and these days like i don't want it to be that easy like i want it to be like hmm I'm going to go check Malika. Let me call her and find out if she whatever, whatever, and link up that way. Like, you know, keep it guessing. Don't keep it obvious. Like, that's what I was saying in my last journey through 30. Like, if you really want to find somebody and they on social media, it ain't hard to find them. Like, it's really not hard. Especially now with geotagging and you finding, um... You finding out certain spots. Like, if they go into these spots that's, like, very popular and stuff like that, it's not hard to find people. It really ain't. I'm not a social person. I'm very shy. Like, if you was to meet me in person, like, I do not speak. I'll have manners. Like, I'll say hello and stuff like that. But my friends tell me that all the time. Like, why you get quiet when new people come around? It's because I don't know them and I'm trying to feel them out. Like, if my spirit doesn't take you then i'm not saying nothing even if my spirit does take you my it's mum's the word it's a little as possible that i'm gonna say it's very little but i know in the beauty business that is not the way that you have to be you have to be more sociable and i'm working on that but i really don't it it doesn't make me comfortable at all now if i know you and i'm comfortable it's hard to shut me up no it's not it's not hard to shut me up like i'm more i'm will more initiate stuff when i'm comfortable but if i'm not comfortable <laughs> i'm quiet but anyways guys that's my little rant it was very quick i wasn't trying to drag it out it's not a drag out knockout type thing but it was just to bring you up to breast a breast breast is to bring you up abreast about what's going on with me What's going on with Jane 230? What's going on with Squeeze of Glam and my normal rants? And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.